Okay, back at it. Okay, so you can do the short, shorter syntax where you, you put the same curly brace and now you put the key colon the value. Okay? And so if you have to make a bunch of these, it's a nice uh, shorter syntax for making a map. Okay, so we saw you can do lookups and you can assign the same way you do with slices, you use brackets. And the key has to be the type that's matched here. So you could set seven, you could get seven. Um, so you can also remove things from a map using delete. Delete's a built-in function. You hand it the map, and then you delete the key. So what is this going to do? seven and three in there, and now it just has three, because we deleted seven, okay? So if you need to remove something from that, just delete. Um, so here's an example of one way we often use maps. And that's as a lookup table. So here's your first however many elements that is. Um, and we can look them up by their symbol. So we've mapped their symbols to their names. So the keys are the symbols, and the names are just the names, but they're both strings. Okay? This is a very common way of using maps. We do this all the time in web programming, but use it in most general purpose programming, we'll do this as well. Um, and so using this, we could actually make our program that we just finished writing a whole lot simpler. With our giant switch statements, we can use a map instead. Um, so we're going to see other programs that are similar that we can see how we can take advantage of that. But uh, so this is a very common way of using maps. Any questions about what we're doing here? And this is why we call it a dictionary often. Right? This looks like a dictionary. You can do this with numbers and other things as well. Same thing. We saw the okay, whether it's not whether it's in there or not. And here's the shorthand syntax. Um, we can do it that way as well. Now here's the other way you often see maps used. It turns out in JavaScript, this is all they have. Um, so this is another difference between Go and JavaScript. So what if we instead, instead of just the name, we wanted also its state at room temperature? So this, this, this crazy type here, map of string of map to string of to string, right? What this is storing is we're storing maps of strings to strings inside of another map, okay? And the key here is the same symbol, but this time the key for the inner maps is just fields or properties, okay? We're just describing something. We're describing hydrogen, its state, and so on. We could add to this um, other things, right? For example, symbol. Right? And so the idea is that we can sort of structure our data using a map. So a map is like a record for us. Imagine a database, this would be a bunch of fields and these are all the values. Okay? So very common way, of, this is the other common way of using that. So we use it like lookup table. We also use it to structure data. Uh, and so in this case, we're not using it so much as a lookup table. We're using it as a record. Okay. So notes string to string. And then if we look at that outer type, we'll see the it's a map of string, two maps of string of string. So it maps from the string to these maps. Following? Is that super confusing? The map string is the first key, and the map string string is the first value on line six. Could you inverse that? Could you do map of map of string? Um, that's a good question. Probably <coughs> not, but let's go look it up. So map types. Your, 
you're asking if you can use a map as a key. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but let's find out. Okay, so a map type. The map type can be, okay, so map, and then the brackets, and then a key type. So what can the key type be? The key type is a type, okay? But they have uh, additional restrictions on that. Um, okay, must be fully, so equals and not equals must be fully defined for offerings of the key type, thus the key type must not be a function, map, or slice. So no, you cannot use a map as a key in a map. Uh, but like I said, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Uh, it's pretty weird. Uh, just for, for fun. You can use strings, you can use uh, ints. Turns out you can use pointers when we talk about pointers, which is kind of odd. Um, but you can use most, most types that way. Can you use an array then? Yes, you can use an array. Uh, so, that's kind of cool, right? Uh, so let's try that. Map of, uh, actually this, this could be useful, right? Uh, well, let's do this. Um, to, uh, I don't know, string. Okay. Uh, I think newer versions of Go would let you do what I'm trying to do here, but you can't do it in this version of Go. Can you do a map of an array of maps? So, I've mapped an array now I need a string, and then we could have another array. So that's interesting. So yes, you can use an array as a key in a map. So I'm using the array one, two as the key for the string hello. Uh, and that means you can look it up. And the way you look it up is x is bracket, right? That seems kind of weird, right? But that's how you would get that. That's the key. This is the key. So why does that work? That, does, that would be pretty much nonsense in JavaScript. But why does it work in Go? I'm going to guess that uh, it uses types. Yes, yeah, so the idea here is that um, an array is just a series of bytes in memory, right? Okay? And so an integer, you can think of, say, a 64-bit integer as eight bytes, right? So in some sense, you know, uh, int 64 is the same as uh, Uh, an array of eight bytes. It's basically the same thing. Now, they're treated <coughs> completely differently, but the point being, in memory, they're basically the same thing. Okay? And because of that, since arrays have a fixed size, you can use them as a key, because this could be 16 or you know 20 bytes. It would all be the same, right? It would just be a block of bytes that's used as a key. So that's why you can use an array. Uh, so this is like, this is the same as So anyway, you, you can use arrays. That's pretty unusual. Um, the, this might be the, one of the few places you might use it. Is this uh, this doing the two two element array? Might be a point, right? And maybe you would use a point for lookup, but uh, pretty unusual. It, we'll see a better way to, to do. Uh, generally, you're not going to want to use arrays for that kind of thing. You want to use a struct, and we'll see structs later. Yeah. Yes, you can do that too. You could make a map of, of, say, string to array of ints. That's totally valid. Or slice of ints, sorry. Uh, that's, yeah, you can do that. What if the key is a single element array containing another map? You, uh, well, you guys are asking all the hypotheticals. What if I'm at Disneyland and I'm using a Galaxy SE? We got the basics. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Time to move on. It was uh, like yeah. after lunch delirium. I think the answer to your question is no, but uh, uh, because he can't use maps as keys. So 
any, anyway, so these are the two uses. We have the lookup table, you look up by a key, and then we have the sort of uh, using records. Now, they're the same thing. I'm just saying these are the two ways we use it. Um, so is everybody following what this is doing when we look up li here? Yes. Or, so can I ask a more practical question? Just can you do an array of maps? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so this is going to return, we'll change it to near so we can see it. Uh, when I do this, it's going to return this guy, okay? Right? And that's what EL will equal, this is inside. Okay? And then when I do EL name, it's going to return that. Following what that's doing. So we have the maps of maps, and we're using the first set of maps as a book of table, the second set of maps as a guide one. In JavaScript, you say el.name. And in Go, we're going to see el and then brackets. You could also do it like that in JavaScript. That's right. In JavaScript, you can do the same thing. You just can't do dots in Go. Uh, with, with structs, you can, but those are different, so we'll cover them a bit. But uh, everybody following what we're trying to do here? So this should print uh, neon and gas, right? So it worked. Um, so, like I said, super common ways of using maps. Uh, maps and slices are like the building blocks of your program. Um, and I think that's, yeah, so now we can do some of the problems. To hopefully try to make this more clear. So, how do you access the fourth element of an array or a slice? Bracket notation. You stick in the fourth element and stick in three. Three, that's right. Just remember the, the weird audio. What is the length of a slice created using make? So what's what's the length of this guy? Three. Right. So what's the capacity? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so if we have this array, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, and it, each is separate strings. Uh, what would two to five give you? Write a program that finds the smallest number in this. Okay, so let's make this uh, this program. This should be pretty easy. Okay, you guys think you can make that program? Just a question for everybody. Show of hands. How many people understand the C through E on the two column five? Show of hands. You get it. Show of hands. You don't. Okay, okay. So the, it takes from the two, including the two, up to the five, not including the five. Zero is A. One is B. Two is C. So it gets C. 3 is E, 4 is E, 5 is F, so we go up to 5, we don't take 5. If I ever say anything wrong, please correct me. <laughs> well, 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 I can show you the, the what does do this real quick? I've work. only taught this one semester, I'm a beginner. <laughs> so 2 to 5. C, D, E, and E, but not F. Because the five, this is the fifth, it's, it's not going to include. I like how you uh, double check everything by running it. It makes me think of like uh, this quote by Audubon said, if the book and the bird differs, believe the bird. Audubon, <laughs> 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 you know, it's like if the teacher and the code differ, believe the code. Right? Like, see if the computer can do it. If it doesn't, believe that. So. Um, and basically, if you, if you need to use these kinds of operations in the not just zero and stuff, uh, check it. Because it's really easy to make a mistake. So, just so I'll, I'll answer number four tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's Why don't you need to write a program? Why a program? Because what if that's two billion? <laughs> exactly. What if it's two billion numbers, right? So, uh, so yeah, everything, they know how to make this program? Let's go ahead and try to do that. Yeah, let's do four and five. And that's a wrap. Hollywood, here we come. <laughs>